Hello everyone. Are you ready to dive into the fascinating world of clinical research? Whether you are a student who is aspiring to join this field or a professional looking to advance your career or simply curious about new treatments that are being developed, this course is the perfect guide for you. So what exactly is clinical research? In brief, clinical research is a branch of healthcare science that determines the safety and effectiveness of the medications, devices, diagnostic products and treatment regime intended for human use. These can be used for prevention, treatment, diagnosis or for relieving symptoms of a particular disease. Clinical research is conducted through a systemic clinical trials involving human volunteers. These trials are essential for the development of new therapeutic methods and ensuring they meet rigorous safety standards before they reach to the general public. In this course, we will cover everything from the basics of clinical research and the various phases of the clinical trial to regulatory requirements, data management, statistical analysis and the critical role of ethics in ensuring patient safety. By the end of this course, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how clinical research shapes the future of medicine. So we will begin by understanding what do we learn in this certification. So this certification shall be module based lectures in which we will start learning from the basics of clinical research and go on to understand all the aspects of clinical research. So what do we learn in this certification? Let us understand module by module. So in the first module, we will start right from the basics. You do not need to have any kind of basic understanding. We will start right from scratch. So in the first module that is introduction to clinical research, we will understand what is clinical research all about? What is the role of clinical research in medicine, pharma, biotech and healthcare industry? Then we will move on to understand how clinical research has the potential in the market and what is the potential of clinical research in the entire healthcare industry. Then we will move on to understand how clinical research plays an important role in clinical data management, pharmacovigilance, regulatory affairs, biostatistics, medical coding, medical writing and related fields. So first we will build your basics of clinical research and then move on. So in the next module, we will understand the history of clinical research because if you see the clinical research, the clinical trial requirement, they are stringent because there have been historical events which were disastrous in nature and that is why the regulations were developed. So it is a journey through the history to understand what were the incidents that happened in history and how we learned from it and came to the current regulation. So first and foremost, we will understand that how the clinical research was originated and which was the first clinical trial conducted in the world. Then we will look at various medical disasters and how regulations were developed as a result of it. We will understand the first regulation in the world which is US Food and Drug Act of 1906. We will also look at the elixir sulfonamide uh, tra tragedy as well as the Food and Drug Cosmetic Act of 1938. Followed by we would understand the nausea doctor trials and how the Nuremberg code was developed and we will also look at the Belmont report and what are the principles of it and finally conclude to the declaration of Helsinki. So this is a journey through the history of clinical research which will give you a comprehensive understanding of what clinical research is, what is the historical significance and how did we reach to the current regulations. So that is module 2. Now we will start to understand the clinical research from drug development and phase trial aspects. So in this particular module, we will understand what are the basics of drug development, how the drug is developed from the scratch to when it reaches to the customer. Second thing is we will understand the entire process of drug development right from the conception of the idea to the experiments to the clinical trials. Then we will look at preclinical studies and various animal models used in preclinical phase of the clinical trial followed by the drug selection for human trial how a drug gets qualified from various experimental molecules followed by the phase trials in phase trials we will understand various phases of clinical 
trials which are phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase 4. We will also understand the journey of the drug right from the lab to the patient. So this particular module of drug development and phase trial would essentially give you the complete idea of how the drug is conceptualized to how the drug gets passes through various phases in its development and finally how does it get to your hands. So that is drug development and phase trials. Now we come on to another interesting module which is ICA GCP and the 13th principle of GCP. So this is again one of the legendary principles or the regulation that is guiding the entire clinical research industry. So in this module we will understand the functioning or formation of ICH which is the organization that gives you good clinical practices that is GCP. We will understand how does ICH was formed, who are the members of ICH and how does this organization develops or functions through the entire world. Then we will understand the regulation bought by the ICH and how the global clinical trials network works through these principles. We will also understand in detail what are the good clinical practices which are to be implemented when you conduct a clinical trial. We will look at 13 principles of ICH GCP which clearly lays down what are the requirements of the clinical trial to be conducted and these principles are the gold standard in the industry and everyone abides by this principle. Then we will also understand which are different iterations of ICA GCP. We will understand what were the latest amendments in E6R2 and we will also understand what are the expected amendment that is E6R3. So you would get a comprehensive idea of ICA GCP, the 13 principles, the regulation that guides the entire clinical trial industry and what are those exactly. Now moving on, we would understand in the next module, which are the stakeholders in clinical research. Now we would have understood how clinical trial starts from drug development. What are the regulations? Now here we understand who all are involved in clinical trial. So there are various people or various aspects to clinical trial and through the collaboration of each and every stakeholder, clinical trial runs smoothly. So these stakeholders, play a very significant role in the trial conduct. So we would understand the stakeholder requirements and what is the involvement of each and every stakeholders in conducting a clinical trial. We will start from understanding the responsibility of the trial sponsor. What does the trial sponsor bring into the table? How the trial is initiated? Then we would go to study investigator who himself conducts the clinical trial followed by the CROs who helps in trial management followed by the ethics committee who takes care of the safety aspects of the clinical trial and then comes the regulatory agency who regulates all the laws and guidelines in the clinical trial and gives a particular drug their approval so that it can bring to the masses for treatment and finally the most important aspect is human volunteers. What is the role of human volunteers when they participate in a clinical trial? What are the rights? What are the responsibility? How are they treated? and what are the laws and convention that helps in protecting them. So we would understand the role of each and every stakeholders who function in a clinical trial. Now next we have another interesting module where we would understand various clinical trial designs. So in this module we will learn various types of clinical trial design that can be adaptive design, crossover design, randomized clinical trial, Okay, we will also understand what is blinded and unblinded trial, what is the difference between them, when do we use masking in the clinical trial, when do we use unmasking in a clinical trial. We would understand the gold standard of the clinical trial design that is randomized clinical trial. What exactly it means? We would understand the role of study protocol, how a study protocol is designed as well as what is the role of a study protocol and also finally we would understand how the inclusion and exclusion criteria are developed in the study protocol and what is the role of inclusion and exclusion criteria in the entire landscape of clinical research. So that would be another important point for us to learn. So here you would not only learn about clinical trial design but you would also understand why each and every design is important in clinical trial and which design is to be used for which particular clinical trial.
next module we have is for human participants and informed consent as you know that the human participants or the study volunteers are one of the most critical aspects of clinical trial in this particular module we will understand the human participation or the recruitment in clinical trial how the human volunteers enter into clinical trial we will understand in deep what are the rights and responsibility of the human participant and understand how the process of informed consenting work because until and unless you sign a consent form you do not get to participate in a consent form we would understand deeply what are the aspects or what are the contents of a informed consent form and what is the role of LAR and IW in that particular consenting we would also understand how does the informed consent form look like in a clinical trial what are its ingredients and finally understand what is the significance of this consent form and how this particular document is one of the most important document when you conduct a clinical trial so we would understand the most human aspects of the clinical trial and what are the safety checks and balances that are in place so that the healthcare or the medicine science can move forward after using human volunteers for clinical trial and what are the safety guidelines that are in place to protect these human volunteers that we will see in this particular module next we would understand another interesting aspect that is clinical data management now once the data is generated through the clinical trial we will understand how that data gets generated we will also look at the basic aspects of data that how is what is data and what are the generation options of the data we would understand how this data is used okay in terms of biostatistics in terms of clinical SAS we would understand that there is a particular data management plan that is being prepared in clinical data management followed by how the data flows from the clinical trials to the data management and finally we would understand various steps that data management conducts during the clinical trial which includes the data cleaning database lock and finally how this particular data is used to submit to the regulatory agency through which they analyze the data and then they provide you the approval for a particular medicine so data management is another important aspect of clinical trial and it is one of the emerging fields to your career in clinical research The next module and this is again an interesting module where we would understand the patient safety and pharmacovigilance that is another important part of clinical research in this particular module we will learn about the patient safety monitoring requirements in a clinical trial what are the adverse event what are the serious adverse event how are they reported in a clinical trial what are the various timelines and requirements of the adverse event we will also understand what is active and passive pharmacovigilance how the safety of the drug is reported because once the drug is in market after your approval there are chances of many adverse events being reported but how are those reported what are the channels is there any responsible agency that takes care of it we would also understand what is signal reporting and how does the who upsala monitoring center works as a pillar in pharmacovigilance and finally we would understand the role of pharmacovigilance in terms of drug safety so you would understand patient safety comprehensively in this particular module as well as what is the role of pharmacovigilance because pharmacovigilance is again one of the most emerging field in clinical research where everyone wants to make their career okay so understanding the basic of pharmacovigilance and how does it work becomes very important now we move on to understanding how careers are developed in clinical research so if you are a student or a professional who wants to enter the field of clinical research and make a career for it you need to understand what are the qualifications or requirements for a clinical research career we would understand comprehensively what are the career options for clinical research also we would look at various career options and avenues in clinical data management and pharmacovigilance and also we would look at what is the compensation and salary st structure in clinical research and what are the expected industry standards that you can expect followed by we would understand the important aspects of clinical research such as, such as growth of your career in clinical research how sustainability is another integral part of the 
uh, job in clinical research and essentially we would understand what is the future of clinical research if you chose this particular career and move ahead okay so this particular module will give you a very 360 degree look of the career options available in clinical research and through this module you would understand that which are the career options right from you it will help you to pick a particular career in clinical research and based on this knowledge you would certainly be able to understand that which particular option in clinical research is good for me so that is about this module that is career in clinical research finally the last module would be the course summary so in this particular course summary we would clearly highlight what are the skills acquired for this course okay so that you can display them in your resume or you can have a comprehensive understanding of skills acquired by you we will take you through step by step the learning objectives achieved so that you are aware that what exactly you have learned through the course of this course okay and what is that that will take you forward in the career in clinical research finally we will also tell you that which are the application area of this particular certification where would you use this particular certification and how would this particular certification would be a critical aspect or a successful driving force in your career finally we would provide you some tips and key insight for job search in clinical research and how you can use this particular certification or the learnings or skills acquired in the certification to move your career propel forward and finally we would look at all the takeaways that you have gathered in this particular course and here you would complete your learning of this particular course so this is generally the process of this course all the modules involved in this particular course so that it can help you comprehensively understand what you are purchasing what you are getting into so i have made this course to have everything put in in it so that you can have a clear understanding of clinical research clear understanding of various career aspects and how the clinical trial or clinical research industry works so now let's meet you in the next module and let us start this journey of learning